Hello everybody, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. Welcome back. It's now February in Tokyo. It's pretty cold actually. I wanted to film this video outside but there's no way in hell. There is no way. I'm just gonna freeze. My fingers are gonna fall off. My toes are gonna turn blue and I'll catch a cold. So I'm sorry. Usual backdrop it is. You will occasionally see little rainbows because I have started hanging crystals and crystal like things near my window because I, I need I need a little more serotonin and rainbows do that for me very random but anyway yes welcome back um, a little while ago maybe two weeks ago I posted on my Instagram stories that I wanted to do a Q&A usually when I post those kinds of prompts on Instagram I don't usually get many responses but I really really wanted to make a Q&A video and I did get one question that was really interesting and that I specifically want to answer. Let me first read that question to you. As someone who is new to your channel, how would you introduce your channel slash work? And it's been a while, it's been a while since I've properly introduced myself, though a lot of you have been following me for a very long time now, but they are quite a few recently that have hopped on board so welcome and that's the first question that I want to answer today because in the end I think I've been on YouTube for I don't know eight years now something like that something crazy like <laughs> most people would have given up like with the amount of views and like the slow growth of the channel most people would have 100% given up but maybe I'm just maybe I'm just crazy I don't know or persistent either or right <laughs> anyway for those who don't know me um i'm iku or len iku is my artist name and len is my nickname i've always said that i would re reveal my real name <laughs> when i reach 50,000 subscribers but at this point is it ever going to happen i think i'll just remain len forever <laughs> who knows um i'm originally from belgium born in the UK, raised in Belgium, half, half, unless you've seen my DNA thing video, then you'll know that I have much more to me. <laughs> my DNA, really random. Uh, and I've been now living in Tokyo, in this exact share house, for almost two years. Like in, in two months, I think, in less than two months, it will be two years of me living here in Tokyo. I am currently a teacher, English and French teacher at a language school, which is very random because that is not at all what I studied. It's just something that I had to do to remain in Japan, which is something that a lot of foreigners end up doing to get a visa in Japan. It's not what I love, but it does the job. It keeps me socialized and um, I get to speak to a lot of people. So. At first I really 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 hated it but now I'm getting used to it and it's tiring but that's what I'm doing for now. Do I want to do this eternally? No. I'm hoping to find something that is much closer to what I actually do which is creative work. Mostly illustration, that is my goal in life. I just want to be an illustrator. I want to draw art books, I want to do art exhibitions. Um, I don't necessarily want to join like a big company or anything, so I guess freelance illustrator would be my dream, like pretty popular enough to earn an income and sell merch and stuff. That would be like the ultimate dream. What kind of illustrations do I do? I love drawing cute girls ultimately. It's always a little tricky to put yourself in one box when explaining what kind of illustration style I have, but I guess what I really love drawing are girls, faces, cute couples. I'm currently really into like pastel color palettes, so yeah that's how I'm gonna define it for now, but do, do check out my Instagram page, this is usually where I post most of my stuff. Though I'm very slow at posting, very very slow at posting because imposter syndrome, etc. I don't, it's difficult for me to post publicly. But I do post some doodles on my Instagram stories sometimes and more stuff on Patreon. Okay, have I done everything for the illustration segment? Okay, the other creative work that I do is video editing. So clearly now I'm making videos for YouTube for myself, but I also edit for other people and I've been doing this quite recently the doing it for other people 
thing I think I started like mid pandemic if you've seen other videos you know how I started editing for other people and now I'm editing for people here in Tokyo which is pretty interesting and pretty cool to be honest I discovered that I really like editing videos I like making them but editing them for someone else is it's interesting it's fun especially if it's like Japan content or some content that I can relate to it's I enjoy it those are the m two main creative outlets activities jobs <laughs> that I have and then I have like my main job teaching I call it my visa job so let's call it that my visa job teaching and then I have the creative things that I hope to be able to focus on one day I hope that was clear hope everything was uh, easy to understand I don't fully remember why I started a YouTube channel way back when it was the golden age of YouTube I always wanted to try it I was in between jobs I was alone in my little Brussels apartment and things just went from there at first I was trying to do like the more like the more popular videos like trends and makeup and stuff and then it became a little more art focused and then I traveled to Japan um, solo for the first time and that's when my channel grew well I'm not gonna say a lot but compared from what it was like I had like a hundred subscribers I got a thousand subscribers very fast and that's kind of where the theme the main topic of the channel stayed like Japan related Japan travel solo travel but for me it became more like video diaries like what am I up to how am I adapting to life in Japan answer with with great difficulty and challenge but hopefully with some amount of grace like even two percent of grace would be good <laughs> for me because i'm kind of a, a little bit of a messy person um but yeah that's how i would define my channel it has been a mix of so many things that it's hard to be like oh i film japan related content no not really i just I just film my experience in Japan. Me, the the illustrator, the video editor, the person who doesn't really enjoy teaching, who is probably a 30-year-old undiagnosed neurodivergent who is struggling in life because she doesn't have the tools, she's never learned the tools to, you know, move onwards properly and you know do things like not procrastinate and manage time more efficiently it's through my lens literally this messy anxious person and i guess that's how i would define the channel and the reason why i show this flawed messy person on camera instead of this put together persona is that i think we're all well a lot of us at least are lost and messy and even though we're adults we have no clue what we're doing and if i was maybe like a younger version of myself or just another version of myself not a youtuber but someone who consumes a lot of youtube content i think that's the kind of videos that i would want to see like to not feel like i'm the only person who is messing up all the time constantly like oh, okay other people feel like this too does that make sense hopefully that somehow makes sense hopefully that is enough of an introduction to my channel to the work i do to what i put out there in the world to who i am as a person i think i i said a lot of things if you haven't caught on by now i do tend to ramble and go from one end to another maybe i do have adhd like i mentioned i'm 100% undiagnosed neuro spicy person yeah I hope this answers your question I hope that people who have joined recently understand a little more what all of this is about and I hope you choose to stay and I hope that I get to interact with you in the comments and on Instagram that's where I interact with the most of you though priority of course are patreon you guys get my fastest answers if you dm me on patreon and instagram anywhere usually i will answer to you guys first thank you you are my biggest support i am eternally grateful thank you very much if you guys have other questions of course leave it down in the comments dm me if you prefer and let's move on to a few more questions that i 
got some of them are very similar so i will group them together one of the questions is have you ever done or will you ever do a meetup with your followers in japan i have never done a meetup um some people have spotted me in the street but have never come up to greet me you guys please do if i have stickers on me i will give you a sticker um i would i would love to talk to you i know i keep saying that i'm socially anxious and have anxiety and it's difficult for me to meet new people but i would gladly meet anyone who comes up to me it's a quick talk maybe a photo just just greet people like put a face to the name of the person who's following me that would be awesome so if you do see me in the street come say hello i might be on my way to work so it might be a quick hello but please do like i said if i have a sticker or something on me some merch i it's yours so we have everything to to win honestly even if i'm in a hurry <laughs> please do uh but no i have never done a meetup like a proper official event i would like to but i'm just a tiny 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 youtuber and also i'm i'm just a woman by myself living here in tokyo so that makes me even more paranoid that i'm that i usually am so if i were to do a meetup one day it would have to be with the proper organization like i want some people that i know with me so i can feel safe that can step in i'm not saying you guys are all creeps but there are people with bad intentions out there and I don't want to risk my sanity because it's, as always, very precarious. It's like walking a tightrope and yeah, enough of that. I would like to, but only if the correct measures are put into place and also if there are enough of you. I don't think there are that many of my followers who actually live in Japan slash Tokyo. I mean, chime, chime in if you are and then maybe we can put something together in the future but I'm just a tiny tiny youtuber and a tiny tiny person so keep that in mind we've got a few people asking about my favorite things in Tokyo some variants are Tokyo on a tight budget or Tokyo in different seasons so let's try and group these questions together so my favorite things in Tokyo let me think more from a touristy perspective than from the perspective of someone who is living in Tokyo because those are two very different things um i love um that you have so many different experiences inside one city yes tokyo is very big but i'm talking about the main tokyo area with shinjuku shibuya asakusa all those things i love that you can go to a temple to a shrine to a beautiful park to a very crowded place with a lot of cafes and bars and shops and experiences like if you travel to Tokyo as your only destination okay sure I do recommend that you see it more <laughs> inside of Japan if you can but there is so much to do just in Tokyo it's possible to just stay there and experience so much so if you don't have the budget to go to different cities in japan and tokyo is at the top of your bucket list for cities that you do want to visit you'll have more than enough to do it will be a great start to your japan journey that is something i love as for my favorite places i think i've mentioned them in other videos but to this day i still love the asakusa and sumida river area yes sensoji is very crowded it's part of the package but once you've done that part you've gone to the shrine you've done the thing go for a long walk beside the river it's just so calming and serene you've got the river you've got a nice breeze you've got the sky tree on the horizon it's usually not too crowded it's i don't know for me it's just a peaceful experience and sometimes you get to walk like right next to a train and that's something i didn't mention in the introduction but you'll figure it out i, I love trains i freaking love trains i need to make more train related videos it's getting pretty clouded so we're losing light Ugh. anyway that's one of my favorite areas i do enjoy shinjuku and shibuya and all those things but it's too crowded for my little anxiety so usually i would recommend sumida i think 
that's the first one that comes to mind. Basil tips, kind of a tricky one. It depends what you want to see. If you're really interested in cherry blossom season, then that's when you should come. That's definitely something you should see. It's something else entirely. The whole like culture and aesthetic around the cherry blossoms here is something else. Just expect it to be crowded. It's gonna be crowded no matter what. Um, winters from January onwards do get pretty cold until at least mid to end of March, I'd say. That's when it starts getting more comfortable. Summers are intense. I know everybody says it, but until you've experienced it, it's... I wouldn't actually recommend coming to Tokyo during the summer season. I would recommend going to Hokkaido or something, so keep that in mind. And then of course there's the red leaves towards the end of the year and the temperatures are still really nice. October, November, even this year, December was quite nice actually. And then budget tips. I made a whole video about that, how to plan your trip to Japan. It's pretty old, but I think the tips are still valid. So I'm trying to think of anything new. Where does the money go? I'm gonna say transportation. Transportation is definitely a wallet drainer, a budget drainer. Trains are very expensive here. So the tip I'm gonna to give today is to really map out your itineraries. That way you can find the cheapest lines to ride, the cheapest tickets, because tourist tickets, there are a bunch of them, so you can save big bucks. Like JR Pass is kind of getting more and more overpriced but there are like daily passes for tourists and things like that okay last question because it's getting very clouded outside and losing light and i feel like i've been filming for for an hour which i probably have because i ramble and i restart a lot last question what places sorry i misread what are places or experiences that feel different living there versus when you were a tourist? I could make a whole video about that, actually I should, but the short answer would be tourism is a holiday. You're there to have fun, you're there to spend money, you're there to experience. Living here is similar to when I was living in Belgium in the sense that I, I have to work, I have to budget, I can't, uh, you know, go out to restaurants every day, things like that. But I'm in a very exciting country. So as much as I love living here, being a tourist was way more fun. And that's normal. If you're expecting to move to Japan, let's say, and expect to have the same life as you had as when you were a tourist, either you're incredibly wealthy and you, you, you can spend and you have free time and you can just enjoy every day, like, you're here on holiday, good for you, or you need to rethink things. It's going to be the same daily grind as when you were in your own country, except it's somewhere way more exciting, in my opinion. Sorry, Belgium, but it's friggin' Tokyo, it's friggin' Japan, right? On the positive, though, I'm more excited every day. I'm more motivated every day. Like. This is a new country, this is a new experience. I wake up like, what's gonna happen today? Not every day, but way more than when I was in Belgium and everything was the same. You never know what's gonna happen here. You might see something brand new that you've never seen before. It could be as little as a new kombini food or something on the street that you'd never noticed before, but because you've suddenly assimilated a little more Japanese or new kanji, you're like, that's what that is. <laughs> And that's exciting. The novelty is exciting and it doesn't go away. Sure, you get used to it, but it doesn't go away. And also the possibilities are endless. Like right now I'm limited to Tokyo, but in the future I hope, I sincerely hope that I get to travel more in Japan and discover more things and ex experience everything that I, I originally wanted to do by moving here. So there is like... There is a future, there is hope, there is light, there is something to move forward to. Whereas in Belgium it was the daily grind, mostly. Like, where is this going? What am I doing? So that is the positive side of living in Japan. It's just like endless excitement and possibilities. I'm making it sound like it's every day. No, not every day. I get my down days just like everyone else, maybe more than the average person. But there is something pulling me forward here that i didn't have before so that's very exciting definitely very positive aspect 
I made it very long again. Being a tourist in Japan is a holiday. It's fun, you can spend as much as you want as you originally budgeted. It's all thrills, to be honest. But living in Japan is, is the daily grind. Except that there's the excitement of being somewhere new. And for me, somewhere that I really like. Somewhere that I enjoy being in. Is, is that the right word? I forgot how I was saying. Oh no, the clouds are really coming in. So let's end this there. Thank you for your questions. I hope I was able to answer as clearly and eloquently as I could. It's just me, this little person here. And uh, yeah, if you're one of the new people here, thank you so much for joining. I hope you stay on. I'm very excited to get to know you. If you're a long time watcher, thank you so much. I appreciate everything about you thank you for being there thank you for your support whether you're, you're a avid commenter or just lurker if you follow me on many social platforms or just this one thank you so much patreons of course as usual you guys are amazing you help me stay afloat here in this very challenging life but wonderful life in tokyo and uh, yeah, I do have some exciting projects on the horizon. I just need to get my head screwed on straight as usual and have a little bit more good luck come my way. But I'm very excited for this year. I've already mentioned that and I hope you guys are excited about 2024 too. Yes, we got this. I appreciate you. I think you are amazing. And of course, I L word you all. Stay in touch. I'd be very happy to hear from you. See ya!